Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Erica L. Coleman again. And, um, hmm, interesting day today. So I did get a lot of rest in. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, stomach's feeling a lot better. No more alcohol for me. Um, first of all, as I said before, um, alcohol is not the answer to your problem. And um, I had, you know, started indulging in drinking, which I'm not supposed to because I am diabetic. Um, but just, you know, the stress level was getting to me. And so um, I just started, you know, drinking a little wine, a little alcohol. And like I said, I was, you know, I started doing this um, over the Christmas holiday. And I mean, I drink occasionally. And when I say, okay, I mean, every other blue moon, we had a bottle of champagne in our refrigerator that was there for like five years from a wedding that we had attended. Um, because I just don't, you know, um, I, I didn't indulge because of the prevalence of alcoholism on both sides of my family. And I've had a number of family members um, who have been through rehab and the whole nine yards. Um, and I didn't come all this way, um, you know, to become an alcoholic. I'm not judging anybody. Um, I'm not judging anybody. It, drinking is just not for me. And so, you know, my stomach is feeling a lot better. And, you know, maybe I'll just, you know, sip a little, you know, champagne or something um, for, you know, to bring in the new year or whatever. But other than that, no, I'm done. So um, anyway, let's get to this crazy story. So a president, a former president of the United States, Donald J. Trump has been indicted. Interestingly, um, I have mixed feelings about this. So he's been indicted on um, charges of, you know, paying hush money to uh, Stormy Daniels, who he had a um, extramarital affair with and then, you know, tried to squash it. Um, so that he could uh, run for president. Um, I don't know, people. First of all, let me say this. Indictments do not translate into conviction. Okay, we're seeing this over and over and over again. Now, I'm not going to say that this is not, as Joe Biden said about the health care, um, what they started calling Obamacare, the Affordable Health Care Plan. Um, I'm not saying that this is not a big effing deal. It's a big freaking deal that a former president would be indicted. But honestly, I doubt if he will ever see um, the inside of a jail. Uh, he still has uh, protection by the Secret Service. They are not going to going to handcuff this man. It's just not going to happen. Okay, it's not going to happen. You're not going to see that. I know people want to see that. Okay, but they are not going to see that. Um, and in fact, you know, it's interesting because I mean, as they say, you can indict a you can indict a ham sandwich. Okay, um, I, what I would have liked to see the indictment on was, you know, the quid pro quo that occurred during his um, negotiations with the Ukraine while he was in president, um, the, 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 the two times that he was impeached, I would have liked to have seen those convict, those indictments, the indictment for January the 6th, which, I mean, police officers were killed for heaven's sake. Law enforcement was killed for heaven's sake. You know, he put the whole country in jeopardy, damn near um, overthrew our democracy, he should be in jail for that. He should be being indicted for that. You know, not some sex scandal um, that happened years ago. Then if it were if it were a rape, 
I could see that. But this is not a rape. This was consensual sex between, you know, two adults. I'm not condoning uh, adultery. I'm a married woman. I've been married for 36 years. I, I, I would probably be indicted and convicted because I'd kill my husband if he had a side piece. Okay. Yeah, I said it. Okay. But, I mean, for heaven's sake, folks, you know, this is, um, yeah, it, it's a big deal. But, again, it's only going to, um, it's only going to, you know, up the ratings. You know, this is going to make money for the cable news network, and that's about it. Uh, it'll make some money for lawyers, although Donald Trump lawyers aren't going to get paid. Let's be real about that. Okay, they're not going to get paid. So, um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kind of whatever, people. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is, you know, this whole idea of, you know, how the conservatives are uh, being uh, transphobic regarding the shooting that happened by a person who was allegedly, now this person's uh, gender identity has not been revealed. Um, but the majority of the people who commit mass shootings are not transgender people. These are majority white men who commit these types of terrorists, okay? Um, I'm not going to use the word cis. I'm just not feeling that, okay? So that whole, you know, language of, you know, you know, cisgender. No, I'm not a cis woman. I'm a woman. Yeah, I said it. That's it. I'm a woman. I'm not a cis anything, Okay. I'm a woman, straight up, as they say, strictly dickly, okay, but um, I think that it's atrocious the way that, once again, the conservatives are using this to further their anti-transgender um, agenda, and I'm saying... Uh, no, once again, miss me with that bullshit, y'all. You just need to really, really stop. You know, it's interesting because one of the things that was so freeing about walking away from um, organized religion, um, especially Christianity. Now, listen, I will be forever grateful to the black faith tradition. Because that's what got us through slavery, Jim Crow, and that's what continues to get us straight through. Now, that's not to say that some of that is not problematic, too. Okay? But I am forever grateful, you know, for that tradition that gave us the spirituals, that gave us the gospel, that gave us that kind of poetic, high rhetoric, eloquent preaching that, you know, got us from one point to the other, that got us from, you know, one week, one day, one hour to the other, that was um, helped us to, to not only survive, but to also thrive. So I'm very thankful for that. But I am really, no, 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 no. Organized religion, I'm not having y'all. I have totally divorced myself, you know, from that. And one of the things that I loved was that once I freed myself from that, I didn't have to hate anybody. You no, know, a friend of mine um, said to me one time, she said, you know what she said? I never had a problem with gay people, with the LGBTQ plus community, as we call them now, until I came to church. And I know that black people, and you can read the article in my book, um, in the in the in, in the matter of black lives, woman is pro. When I talk about 
um, the massacre at the Pulse Club that happened in Florida a couple of weeks ago when I said, no, this was not an act of God. And I talk about how, particularly with black people, the truth of the matter is, the first gay people that we come into contact with are in the church. The best choir directors, the best singers, most of them are part of the music ministry. So, you know, I was just so, no, I, you know, I'm just not about anymore condemning people to hell. I don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. And the truth of the matter is, is that, um, and quoting Sam Cook, when he says, um, in a change is going to come, you know, it's too hard living, but I'm afraid to die because I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. You don't know what is beyond here. You just don't. But, you know, we have used the whole rhetoric of hell and the whole nine yards, and, and I mean, totally misused the Bible. That's like every other religion with a written scripture misuses in order to control people. And I'm just not having it anymore. I'm just not having it anymore. So I just wanted to come back on here. Um, and I just wanted to point out two things. As y'all can see my girl over here on the corner, she just gives me life. Okay. Um, just, you know, being serene, you know, being present, you know, in that position of meditation, you know, with the, with the, with, with the mudras, the hand, that the hand, um, position to help her to center. And then behind me, um, this large piece over here, because, you know, I love elephants. Um, this, this elephant that I just bought, I just bought from a store called Retro in um, Lancaster, uh, Pennsylvania. I was supposed to be going to Tuesday morning. Now, I'm so sad that Tuesday morning is closing. But the one in Lancaster, Pennsylvania is staying open. But anyway, I got this piece from there. And I just absolutely love it. You know, I love the symbolism in it. First of all, elephants um, symbolize um, uh, uh, obstacles, with the removal of obstacles, wisdom, creativity, um, intellectualism. I mean, everything that I am into. And so, you know, I really didn't understand what my affinity towards elephants, you know, was until I studied Hinduism and understood um, and, and came to understand, and particularly my um, favorite uh, deity, um, Hindu deity, is Lord Ganesha. Okay, and you can go Google uh, Ganesha and find out what, you know, he's all about, the whole myth and the whole story behind that, okay? But, you know, this beautiful piece of art, you know, um, with the, that crown up there, that's a, that's a Buddhist, um, that, that Buddhist crown um, that you see there, and then that evil eye that's supposed to keep evil away from you. This thing is just full of symbolism, and I just, and the color, it's just absolutely beautiful. So, you know, as you can see throughout this room, and you can see throughout my house, you know, and my house is my sanctuary. And, you know, like I said, I've been under a lot of stress. And, you know, I need to be doing walking meditation throughout my house because I have so much symbolism here. Um, and as you can see, namaste, um, which means the divine in me, acknowledges the divine in you um we really really do need to um be mindful and acknowledge each other's humanity and so that's all i'm saying about you know this business 
of um, what's going on with the way that the conservatives. Now, don't get me wrong. I do have criticisms of the Democrats and of, you know, the so-called liberals, okay? They are not off the hook, believe me. Um, but, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the craziness, the super craziness of the conservative party um, needs to be addressed. And I'm not saying that, again, that there's not um, things within the Democratic Party and, you know, the liberal um, establishment that is not problematic because it is. I have a problem with both um, political parties myself. Okay. Um, unfortunately, being a, a, a an independent, which I was for years, you disenfranchise yourself if you are in a state that um, you can't vote in the primary. And that's how it is in the state that I'm in. And the only reason why I re-registered as a Democrat was because during um, the primaries for, you know, the 2020 election, um, there was the Democratic establishment who, you know, were very vocal about how they were coming after Bernie Sanders. Now, I have, again, Bernie was not a perfect candidate, okay? I did like his progressive politics. He got some really funky ideas about race, though, which I had a problem with it, especially with his, um, uh, uh, this notion of that the issue of reparations was um, divisive. Really? I mean, I just thought as a Jewish person, him saying that was problematic. And even just some of the things that he said in his speeches as it pertained to black people, you know, as if we are a monolith. Um, but I did like, you know, a lot of his progressive politics. And my problem was that, you know, and this is why, you know, I challenged this whole idea about, you know, well, you know, our democracy is in danger. Did we ever have a democracy? Which democracy are you talking about? Slavery democracy? Jim Crow democracy? Um, e um, unequal work? For um or uh, for for equal pay, democracy. What kind of democracy are we talking about here? Okay, um, student loans. You can't you you can bail out all of these corporations or whatever, but you can't. Um, you got to go all the way to the Supreme Court in order to um uh to 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 challenge going to the Supreme Court to challenge student loan forgiveness. It's a Ponzi scheme. And you know what? As, as, that's another subject that we're going to have a discussion on. And that is this Ponzi scheme. And I call it a Ponzi scheme because, you know, the whole issue is, is that college was opened up. College was opened up to everybody because it was supposed to be giving everybody an opportunity as a step up. But then if you're poor, and then on top of that, if you're black and poor, if you're female and poor, and, 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 and all those intersections, you know, how are you being given a head start? Or how are you leveling the playing field when you have instituted um, student loans which, you know, most people are going to be, and I'm one of them, are going to be in debt for the rest of our lives and not able to climb the economic ladder because you are burdened down with student loans. But I'm coming into this 20-minute mark, and God, Lord have mercy, one of these days I'm really going to stick to my 10-minute limit. But anyway, I'm coming into this 20 minutes, so I'm going to wrap it up here. But I am going to do a, um, I am, I am going to do a talk about, you know, this Ponzi scheme and how, you know, college is really not worth. If you cannot afford to send your kids to college, they shouldn't be gone. We need.
need to come up with something else. We need to do something else besides cower. And there are a lot of people who are doing well, who are making um, pretty good money without going to college. And I know a lot of people are going to want to throw tomatoes at me and eggs at me for saying that, but it's the God on the truth. But more on that later, I am way over my time. But um, we'll see, you know, what's going to happen, you know, with this indictment. Um, And, you know, conservatives, once again, miss me with this stupid bullshit about, you know, transgender people are violent people. Because transgender people actually um are they they are more at the uh violent end so they are more attacked violently than they perpetuate violence let's stop the crap people let's really just stop the crap anyway dr erica l coleman let me sign on off here i'm going to thank you all for tuning in um for listening I want to thank the new subscribers to this channel. Um, I hope more of you will subscribe. Um, and I'm just going to, you know, keep putting out content um, that I think that is important. Um, and, uh, well, have a good night. Bye-bye.